this video we'll see how to use groups in ANSYS ice pack. So I have a typical ice pack model with some ice pack primitives in it, some heat sinks, some network objects, some fans, and a grill and some openings. And I want to create groups for all of these objects so that it is easier for me to edit them at once or to assign material properties at once or to even delete them at once. To create a group, I can select a bunch of objects. Let's say I want to create a group for all these DDR objects here that are these objects here. So I can select all of them in the model tree, right click and then create group. I can name the group here, say DDR and then click done. The group will appear under the groups node with the name DDRs on it. And if I right click on the DDRs node, I have a bunch of options available to me. So let's go over them one by one. First, uh, edit. If I click on edit here, I can change the appearances of all the objects in that group. So this will be color, line width, text, textures, shading, etc. I can put in some numbers and if I want to reset them back to default, I can click on the reset button. Uh, I'll leave it as is for now, so I'll click cancel. Then if I right click again, I, I want to rename this group. So from DDR, I can say DDR objects. And then if I want to copy and paste this group or make multiple copies of this group, so I can use the copy option. So let's say I want to copy this bunch of objects and I want to translate them by say 50 millimeters in the X direction. So I can put in a value of minus 50 and change the units to millimeters and then click apply. So they appear here, but I don't want them over there. So I can just click done and because they are appearing here in the model tree, I can click delete or I can just right click and then click delete here. Next, if I right click and click on move, I can move these objects by some value in the coordinate directions. So let's say, for example, I want to translate them by five millimeters in the X direction. I can click apply and they have moved five millimeters in the positive X direction. I, I will leave it as is and click done. Next, if I right click and if I click delete here, then the group is deleted and the objects are left intact. So if I want to create the group again, I can go ahead and select all the objects here, right click, create group, or I can right click on groups and click create. I can name the group as DDR objects and then press enter. And I can select the objects here and then drag and drop onto this group. Now, if I right click on the DDR objects group and click delete all, it will not only delete the group, but it will also delete the objects also as well. So if I click delete all, then all the objects have been deleted from the model. If I click undo, then all the objects are brought back in. So make sure that you know the difference between delete and delete all. Delete deletes the group only and the objects are left intact in the model. Delete all will delete all the objects within that group. If I want to edit all the objects at once, then I can select edit objects. Here you can see it says blocks multiple, which means multiple objects have been selected. And now I can go in and modify the properties for that particular group of objects. I can make them hollow objects, I can make them as fluid blocks, or I can make them as two register networks. Let's stick to solid objects. And I want to select different material for all the DDR objects. So I can double click on the solid material drop down menu here and then double click here and start typing some other material name. So let's say for example, silicon and I can select silicon typical and click accept. I can also change the power for all the objects in the DDR objects group. So let's say I want to change it from 1.125 to two watts. I can change it to two watts and click done. Now, if I go to one of the objects in the model tree for DDR and double click on the DDR object, I can see that the material has been changed as well as the power. 
Next, if I want to change the meshing levels of all the objects in a given group, then I can click on meshing levels and then I can put in a value for the multi-level max meshing level to say 3 or 2 or 1 as you wish. It is recommended not to go above a value of 3, otherwise the mesher will take a long time to mesh the model and you might end up with a very large mesh count. Similarly, I can create a group for the fan objects. So I can click on the left fan and the right fan, right click, create group, and I can name this as fan objects and click done. So they will appear under the fan objects group here. I can right click on the fan objects group and make them invisible if I don't want to see them in the model for some reason. And I can right click back on the fan objects group to make them visible again. Similarly, I can activate and deactivate the fans if I click on deactivate all. So all the objects in that group are now deactivated and they will appear in the inactive folder here in the model tree. I can reactivate them by right click and activate all. So now they are active and they will appear in the model tree here. Next, if I want to create an assembly out of the DDR objects that are available to me here, I can right click on the DDR objects group and then create assembly. Note that when I create an assembly, it, the assembly will appear under the model tree here and I can go in and change the properties of that assembly by going in and clicking mesh separately, putting in the slack values and using a different max element size than the global maximum element size to get uh, non conformal mesh over that particular assembly compared to the global mesh. And finally, if I want to save the group as a project, I can right click on the group and click on save as project and I can name it as say fan objects project file and then click save and now it has been saved as a project to this folder here. I can then load this project into any other project by using the merge project functionality under file merge project or I can right click on model and click merge project to bring in the project that is my fan objects. So that was it for this video on how to use groups in ANSYS ICEPAC. Stay tuned for more videos on ANSYS ICEPAC and thanks for watching.